Monday night is here. We'll just call it Mock Draft Monday because this is the first mock draft I am doing here on Last Second Sports. I'll be doing it with Coach by my side. But before we get there, we have two topics we need to discuss. One of them is Jed York becoming the principal owner. And the second is what Ayuk and Lynch had to say in their back and forth on negotiations today. I find this one fascinating. We're going to talk about all of those things, plus more, next. All right, welcome back to Last Second Sports, where we are giving you our take down to the last second, and it's Monday night, which means I got Coach in the building. What's up, Coach? How you doing, my man? What's going on, Jess? We in here to get it. The owners' meetings are cracking. We seeing what's going on with the Niners, and the draft is readily approaching, man. Let's go. Oh, man, I'm excited about this. There were some interesting things that came out of the owners' meetings, though. The first one was Jed York became the principal owner of the 49ers basically bought out his mother's shares. So he is the head honcho. Finally, when it comes to the San Francisco 49ers, what are your thoughts on this going forward? I know we've had a lot of discussion about Jed York and what we think about him as an owner, but now he's like the main guy. How does this change anything or does it change anything? What are your thoughts? Um, It just means that he's a little bit more entrenched. Uh, I think that for what it's worth, um, we've always kind of looked at Jed as a figurehead. I mean, we got to be able to keep the, keep the same energy, right? Jed has been called a figurehead many times that he's basically not necessarily the buck doesn't stop with him. You know, he's just a signature on the checks. He's not necessarily granularly involved in, um, all of the football operations with the team. And in a way, you could see that Jed was virtue signaling towards this. In his press conference that he gave before the Super Bowl, he kind of made took a little victory lap and made sure that he put his name on a lot of the decisions that were happening throughout the regime, especially the latest acquisitions that we picked up. He talked that nauseam about the CMC trade. He talked about moving on other players. He talked about the, the draft strategy of the team. He talked about primarily what they're what they need to do in the offseason towards free agents. I mean, Jed really kind of gave a full uh depiction of how he sees the team. And I feel like the the undergirding narrative in him speaking was I need some credit. You know, give me some damn credit. You know what I'm saying? So him actually owning the team now, it's like now we can't worry about Dr. York coming around, pacing through the practice sidelines with the three and five 49ers team and wondering what's going to happen now. Uh, and for, for lack of a better term, the, the supervision is out has left the room. The boys have got the show. It's Jed and his friend, Kyle. And that right there may seem to be a little bit troublesome down the road because we're going to have to see if Jed can stand up to Kyle, if Jed has expectations for Kyle, if Jed knows how to choose the franchise and the fan base and the players over Kyle. So there's a lot that's going to come out um, in the future that I feel like is going to bear that out. I'd like to see how Jed is going to be an owner towards Brock Purdy versus Kyle. Is Brock Purdy Jed's quarterback or is – Kyle Shanahan's Jed's coach, which ergo found Brock Purdy, you know, so it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. It is going to be interesting. And I, <laughs> that was the one thing that I couldn't get out of my mind when I heard that he became the principal owner, which is when his dad was pacing the sideline after that slow start. And that those things are not going to happen anymore. They're not going to matter because he is the guy, but it also makes you wonder, and I got to believe that the contract extensions that York, or excuse me, that Lynch and Shanahan continually get maybe a little bit early than what we would expect. I think those are coming from Jed. 
So those are going to continue to be a thing. I think Jed oftentimes makes decisions with his heart over his mind. Mm -hmm. We saw it with, with Harbaugh. I think we've seen it a couple of times with these early extensions. And I think that those are going to continue to be the way that things are around San Francisco. So not that big of a deal. I mean, ultimately we as fans, not a lot changes York Jed York was the guy. He was the face. He was what we looked at when we thought of the owner anyways. Now it's just become official. Yeah, it's just, I mean, he's here now. He's he's here. We bought him, you know, or he bought it, so to speak. And uh, you know, um, I don't I don't want to like put anything on it before we actually see exactly how it's gonna bear out. But for what it's worth, you know, um Jed's demeanor as an owner has been at question when it comes to accountability and responsibility. Um, so we'll see how it works. Uh, but um, I said this, I'm gonna keep the same energy. Jed gives me team mom vibes. So you're gonna have to show me that he's an owner. I, I want to be able to see him inject himself in a healthy way and also kind of make, you know, now that this is 100% your team, like what's really going to be your role? You know what I mean? Like no more of this spokesman shit. Like what are you, what are you doing and what is going to be your day to day? Yeah, absolutely. There's uh, <laughs> the other, the other <laughs> the other in a way thing. it kind of feels that way <laughs> it kind of does yeah. well the other thing that that i remember too recently was the way that he acted towards the players at the end of the super bowl armstead going up to him waiting to say hi to him after the game and then moving on from him just a couple months later i don't know there's some interesting things going on with york but for what it's worth he's the principal owner not a lot changes in my mind it's just official. It's officially official. But there was some news that came out today. And before we get to some mock drafts, there was some news that came out today. John Lynch talked to the media. And John Lynch made it clear. Listen, they want Brandon Ayuk to be there for a long time. Mm -hmm. They are going to make his contract a priority after the draft. They also are willing to let him play on his fifth-year option. Now, somebody quickly asked, do you think Ayuk is willing to play on his fifth year? And he kind of laughed and said, well, that's the question that needs to be answered. So he him. said, yeah, exactly. He said all the right things. But what I find interesting, oh, and that they're constantly talking. They're, they're constantly in talks, right? But he says all the right things. Ayuk comes out immediately after... John Lynch talks and puts on his Instagram in all emojis, by the way. So you got to decipher what he's saying. He said, money talks and BS walks to which George Kittle caught wind of that and put on his Instagram in all emojis. Don't walk away. Those hands are about to get you the bag out of this world money. You're about to eat dog. So a lot happened. A lot of negotiation tactics going on, certainly. What are your thoughts around Brandon Ayuk and how the 49ers are handling things, what they've said, and what Ayuk has said, and how he is choosing to handle things? He still ain't got no leverage. <clears throat> it's 100% up to what the Niners want to do. Brandon Ayuk is due 14 to $15 million this year, and he's also due... Um, a franchise tag if they want to by next year. Um, and that's just the long and short of it. And the only time that uh, uh, the only time that <clears throat> we're going to actually see any type of movement with BA is that if a team finally steps up strong enough to give us a package for BA that we just cannot deny. Right. So that's really what it is. Unless somebody comes in and wows us with a compensation package that matches something that far supersedes BA and we can just get rid of it, um, move BA, we're going to do it. If not, BA is going to play for $15 million this year. He's chatting. The thing about it is that I just feel like he's a little too reactionary. You don't have to respond literally after the interview. I mean, how heavy handed can you be? I mean, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you're kind of more on the nose on that one, a little too on the nose. And 
again, this is just kind of more of what we've been seeing through the whole offseason. B.A. is doing a lot of chirping because this is all he can do. This is it. This is the long and short of his leverage, right? I mean, unless he flat out comes and says, I want to trade. And then you're a malcontent and you're used goods anyway. And then that's how the league works. You'll be out of here in three years. So um, it's nice. I understand B.A. is doing what he's supposed to be doing right now because he wants his bag. And a good, uh, a, a little bit of healthy leverage never hurts anybody. But at the same time, if you just want to take it down to the money aspect, like the actual brass tax of the situation, BA is due $14 million in change. The Niners don't have to do anything. He will show up and play. He's going to play really hard because it's going to be in a contract year. And even in the contract year, if the Niners really want to take it to the next level, they can franchise him and keep him a whole nother year and then really get the compensation that they want from him. So this really is just kind of like a good offseason fodder. They might. Yeah. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I really do. I've said it multiple times. I personally don't think BA is going to go anywhere. But if BA truly came out and said, listen, I, I don't want to be here. I do think the 49ers would try to try their best to make something happen. Mm -hmm. I don't think they want a player here that doesn't want to be here. They basically just paid Armstead to not be here because he didn't want to be here anymore. And this is the way they've operated. It's not like it's happened very often. And and Debo said, "Hey, I want to be traded." That was a that was a money play. But if Brandon Ayuk truly does not want to be here, I think that they would let him walk. I just don't think that that's necessarily the case. I think what he's doing is trying to gain any leverage that he can, at least in the court of public opinion, knowing damn well to your point, he doesn't have any leverage. He really could be franchise. They could have him for the next three years without giving him any contract. Not one penny. That's the reality. So. Yeah. I mean, and, and I hate to, you know, it, it would be fun to kind of just go with the back and forth of this, but really what kind of killed BA's entire, like, swag, this entire, like, motion that he's in right now is we dealt with this with Debo. Mm. So it's just like, because it's like, we kind of been here already. So with, with BA kind of like giving us part two of it, I feel as though maybe if this was the first time we've dealt with something like this, maybe the reaction to just uninformed fans would be like, man, like BA really wants to get out of here. What's going to happen? But, you know, I kind of feel like that gun's got one bullet and Debo already shot it. So now with BA, it's kind of like it's almost like the middle kid trying to wild out. And it's like, well, your older brother already did this. You do understand that we've dealt with this before. It's not that it's, we're not going to, you know, get knocked off our pivot just because, you know, you want to you want to assert yourself for your worth. And to be a to be a credit to defend him. What else can he do? Right. What else can he do? He's a player. He's on the team where he feels as though that he's underutilized and he feels like there could be a position where he may get cornered, right? Where it's like, look, I understand what my numbers say, but everybody knows on this offense how vital I am to getting things done. And I want to get paid just like the rest of these guys. I'm not going to be a second fiddle um, fiscally on this team. You know, I mean, it's – if you're BA and you're looking at the defense and you look at all of what those guys get paid and then you look at the offense and then the guys that are ingratiated with uh, Kyle and you see Debo making $28 million per, Trent making 30, 30 plus million dollars per, Kyle Juszczyk is the highest paid player at his position in the league with a pay cut and he's still the highest paid player at his position in the league. All right. And then – George is still knocking down his 17. It's like, yo, if you're BA, you're like, nah, dude, like you guys got to pay like you way. You know what I'm saying? So well, I don't know where he's coming from. We have two questions. One of them is by a live insurance says, why wouldn't he want to be here? I'm not saying that he wouldn't want to be here, but on the off chance that he doesn't want to be here, I think the 49ers would try to make it work for him. As long as he does, does make that clear prior to the draft so they can try to get something for him. But I, I mean, the biggest reason would be targets. He thinks he's the best weapon on this team. I, I'm sure he does. Now, whether you agree with that or not, that's totally fine. 
but that's the way that he thinks. That's the way that these guys who are great all think. So I'm sure Debo thinks the same thing and CMC and Kittle and, and whatever, but he thinks he should be getting his lion's share of targets. And right now he's not, he's not right now. He's not getting paid the way that he thinks he deserves. And he's not getting the shine that I'm sure he thinks he deserves. So if you're not going to give him either of those things and make him play on the fifth year, that's not going to make him happy. He's going to want to go somewhere else. But if you give him the pay, he thinks he deserves, I'm sure he's fine with it. <laughs> but so you, they got to figure that out. And I, I think ultimately they will, but there is a chance that that does come to a head. And he says, Hey, I don't want to be here. I know I can go somewhere else. I know I can win somewhere else. And I know I can get paid and get the targets that I think I deserve somewhere else. So those things and are really, all possible. And really, it's all about elevating himself to where he thinks he belongs. I mean, it's hard yeah. to say this with Debo being on the team, but if you get B.A. by himself, he'll let you know, I am a number one receiver. I believe that I'm oh. a number one receiver. I believe that I should be able to lead an offense and get all of the targets, like you said, Jesse. Um, and I want to get paid like the number one option on an offense. And I feel like in today's NFL, um, it's open season on being a really good receiver. Everybody needs one. Every team needs one. And for BA to be to hold that to hold that title on this team, but for it to not reflect on the balance sheet, I can see where his beef is. It's like, look, every number one receiver on around the NFL, up and down the NFL, they get paid like they are, they're the number one threat. I'm the number one threat on this team, but the only difference is, is that I get used for clear out routes. I get used for definitely getting other people open. And then on top of it, I block my ass off and I'm a malcontent. I'm a malcontent in the, uh, I'm not a malcontent in the locker room. It's like, and then not only that, but then I have to take second fiddle to all of the embedded names that are already here. Like I'm, if I'm BA, it's like, well, how can I elevate myself over a Trent Williams? How can I elevate myself over a Debo Samuel, over a Christian McCaffrey? And week after week after week, it's like these guys are the ones that are getting elevated. And then on top of it, if you look at the hierarchy, I'm nowhere near these guys. And those guys aren't even over the freaking coach. So it's like, where do I really stand? Like, I'm leveraged in this entire situation. I really could get, I really can get buried if they don't want to give me targets. They don't have to. So I see what BA is saying. Like, he doesn't like his situation. Yeah. I mean, I don't necessarily want to say he doesn't like his situation. If he gets paid, he'll love his situation. <laughs> so, True. But right now, if he's not paid and he's not getting the targets, I'm sure he wouldn't like that situation. But, you know, it, the 49ers do this. They wait until late in the offseason. And these four, these players have got to figure that out at some point. They've got to understand how this works. He'll get paid. He will get paid. Whether it's here or somewhere else, he will get paid. We'll find out on draft night if the first round comes and goes, and I assume that it will without him being traded. Then it will be here, and it will be this offseason, would be my guess. As long as he's not asking for an astronomical number, I think he's probably going to be somewhere in that $26 million range, and I think the 49ers will make that happen. But we will see. I mean, a lot can change very, very quickly. These things change very quickly. We saw once upon a time, A.J. Brown, when Debo had asked for a trade, it was A.J. Brown that got traded on draft night. Nobody saw that coming. Mm -hmm. If anything, when that class of wide receivers was up for being paid, you would have thought that the malcontent would have been DK. DK Metcalf was the guy. You're like, if anybody's going to ask for a trade or act wild, it's going to be DK. He mm -hmm. was the quietest out of all of them. Didn't so say a you word. Oh no, you don't know how these negotiations are, negotiations are going to go. You don't know how their agents are directing them to act. You you just don't know these things. So we'll 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 know we'll know very very soon. That's what's great about the draft. But. We've got another question here, and I like this question. It's from Sergio. Thank you, Sergio. I haven't seen you in the chat very often. Thank you so much for being here. It says, hi, can I ask you guys a question? Are you guys getting very nervous about the 2024 49ers season? Well, the 49ers right now, 
The over under is set at 11 and a half wins, which is tied for the best in the NFL with, I think, Kansas City and one other team, maybe the Ravens. I don't know. I think right now I would take the under and put them right at 11 wins is what I see. But when the schedule comes out, things will change. I'm not nervous per se, but I am interested to see what's going to happen because there's a lot of turnover when it comes to the defensive line. There's turnover on the defensive coordinator. There's turnover in other places in this coaching staff. The 49ers, to me, their best chance to win it was last year. I said that midseason. We saw how close they got. I personally do not believe they will be back in the Super Bowl. I think it's going to take a lot. And I don't know that they're going to be able to meet those expectations. So based off of where my expectations are, 11 win season, not making the Super Bowl, I'm not nervous. But if if I really thought, hey, this is their final year, they've got a real chance, it's the 49ers, then I would be a little bit nervous because this is it. Like, this is truly it. With this cast of characters, this is truly it. And in fact, we saw already Armstead is gone. Next offseason, Coach, you and I were talking about this today. Next offseason is going to be probably the most interesting offseason that I can say we've had a lot since I've been making content because yeah. there's a lot of these big time players that are going to be hitting big numbers. They're going to have to decide to move on from some of them. Also, Brock Purdy is going to be up for being paid. How do they handle his situation? If they don't give him a long term deal or they don't give him around 50 million, that tells you a lot about what they think about him. There's so many things going into next offseason. And I say all of that to say that means that the 49ers truly have got to get it done this year. Are you nervous about the 2024 season? Not at all, because I already understand what's about to happen. Um, if I had us winning nine games last year, uh, I got us winning six. It's like, no, I'm just no. I'm like, Dang, you're not going to double down right now. Please, please tell me you're not going to double no, down. No, 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 I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, <laughs> for me, um, I don't want to count my eggs before they're hatched. Yeah. We got to see the draft. I still need to see the draft. Um, for sure. The, the new league year just started. Um, and for what it's worth, I like what they've done thus far. If we do what we need to do in the draft. The draft is huge. This is our first time back with a full boat as far as all a pick in every round. It's primarily a first round pick. And we got to really make something shake at 31. I like yeah. the fact of, I like the fact of, having the richest offensive line draft in years and years past. And really the Niners need to kind of break outside of their norm and prioritize the position. If we were to go in and actually go get our tackle, go get a guard, go get our tight end, go get our linebacker, go get more depth at safety and corner. And like, if we were to go do that, then I got to lean on what we've done thus far as far as as far as the coaches being able to develop the guys getting in here, maybe getting some added guys. And we also just don't know what we're going to see out of that rookie class that necessarily kind of let us down last season. So there's a lot to bear out. Um, we need proof of concept in the preseason. Um, we got to figure out what Brock is coming in with his first offseason by himself. Um, and we already know that uh, one thing that I was very encouraged with is maybe the fr maybe the Dre Greenlaw um, injury is shaping out to be something where he may be able to come back by December or maybe into the year. Because John Lynch clearly said that, you know, Dre is convinced that he's coming back week one. And he said that at least what we're going to try to do is get Dre, get Dre on the pup. Now, before that happened, I was completely sold on just Dre is done. It's an entire year. He's gone. Really? You know? <clears throat> yeah. I thought that he was done oh. as soon as he tore his ACL. I mean, tore his Achilles. I didn't think that there was a possibility that he could actually be back and play. Right? There's a difference from being back and being able to go. But being back and being able to play are two completely different ball games, in my opinion. And really... Um, what kind of made me shift my thinking on that was the interview with John today at the owners meeting, John Lynch, that is, where he admitted that, shoot, we may, I know Dre is convinced that he's ready by week one, but at the very least, what we're going to try to do is start him on the pup. So, I mean, things shape out. I understand uh, 
this is a living and breathing document, if you will, as far as you know, the ebb and flow of the season. I had us going nine and eight last season, but I also didn't have us being the healthiest that we've ever been. I didn't, I didn't call that. I also did not call us picking up three defensive linemen in the middle of the season to supplant the depth that I had saw was depleted at the time. I also didn't call most of the um, NFC East having a down year and being young this last year. I didn't call that. I also didn't see the Chiefs being as mediocre as they were at times throughout the season. So I understand that right now it's looking a little bleak. I get it. You know what I'm saying? But take a look at the thumbnail. It's stay faithful. So it's just, <laughs> if you think about all of the things that have to happen until we get into the actual season, and then not only our storyline, but everybody else has got to go through their own situation too, and the injuries that incur, um, you'll be able to shape things out a little bit more. My biggest thing right now is just not going into the season with blatant holes. That's a big deal. So um, for right now, um, I feel okay because I understand that the rest of the conversation is yet to be told, especially with the draft. A lot of our needs are in the draft too. I can see if it was just the draft and it's like, oh, you know, like almost kind of like going to Vegas and like maybe just seeing if we can get lucky. But no, I, I'm I'm specifically reserving judgment due to the fact that this is such a deep offensive line draft. There's a lot of what we need in this draft. So they could really knock it out of the park. It's still there. Yeah, this exactly. A, a, Alec Corley. Like there's guys in yeah, there, man. There's guys. This is a good question. Niners Worldwide says, if the Niners could hit on one position in the draft, what position would you guys want it to be and why? It, for me, it has to be a tackle. And the reason is because I would love for them to upgrade the right side today and potentially have a replacement for when Trent Williams retires, which could be next offseason. It could be the season after. But it's it's coming. It's sooner than later. So for me, it's got to be. I would love for it to be tackle. Love for it I to would, be tackle. I would love for it to be tackled too, but a sneaky position that I would like, they would kill if they found another good tight end. If mm -hmm. they got another good tight end in this year's draft, like being able to have two tight ends with our offensive line and how we don't prioritize it, like with the wide zone, having a guy that can run. I'm telling you, man, a good tight end. If we hit on a good tight end, that would make life so much easier for George. Yeah, We'd actually it would. Yeah, it might. That's that's actually a think good point. Think about, a very, think, very about good point. think about this. Debo gets preserved by BA, correct? Right? I think they, Debo gets preserved by CMC. All right, okay, and vice versa, right? Mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. all right. So, and then Trent gets preserved just by Kyle. Period, right? Mm -hmm. But who's preserving George? Like what 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 that was really funny. You threw me off this <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it's I had to put it up there. <laughs> no, but like who's who is spelling George? Right? George you, is, you would hope it would be use check who's getting paid stupid money to play his 48% of the snaps. George is still spelling juice over his over interviews with Rich Eisen. Like all I'm telling you is that right now, George is if you think about it, George is played with pretty much one of the most lopsided units uh, on the team. And offensive line is different because Trent is a part of the offensive line, but Trent plays tackle. You see what I'm saying? It's not like Trent has to really deal with being sandwiched by somebody who sucks. Like, he can kind of do his own thing out there. But with George, he really is a one-man band. It's kind of been ridiculous. Like, I lo God love Ross Dwelly, and I think Grant's done a, an amazing job campaigning for Ross. But as far as just guys who've had help, right, who can actually accentuate their game, I think, honestly, if you think about it, now that I'm, I'm kind of pausing, George just got help. And you know where he got his help? Brock. Mm. George just got help. Outside of that, it's all been pedal to the metal with George. Use his blocking, put him in the tightest, put him in the most dangerous parts of the field, have him go for the craziest balls, pause, and everything else that he needs to do. But with George, I feel like 
Brock actually is giving helping George's career. But outside of that, getting another tight end would would really be great. All right. Well, we get to decide exactly what they should get and when they should get it because we're about to do a mock draft, my friend. Mm -hmm. And we're going to try to squeeze in two. We're going to do one with the BA trade. So we don't need to like spend crazy time on all these picks, but one with a BA trade and one without a BA trade. Let's get it. So what do you think, realistically, what do you think Brandon Ayuk is worth if they were to trade him? A lot of people are like, oh, we better get a first round pick and a player or a top 10 pick. I don't think either of those are happening. I, I look at it and say, I don't know, anywhere from 17 to 25, I could see. Yeah, the same exact way I feel. I was going to stop literally at 17. I think 17, yeah, 17 to 25 is, is exactly where he would go. Um, Go ahead. Let's let's see. I mean, the Steelers, right? Like, they're the one team that has been linked. So let's see if we can get the Steelers to make a trade with us. It always force the trade, but I'm not going to force a trade. For pick 20. Should be able to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Are you doing a mock draft simulator? Yeah, you don't see it on the thing? Yeah, I see it right now. I'm sorry. Okay. Yep. There we go. Okay. We got it accepted. So we can start the draft. We've got pick 20. We've traded Brandon Ayuk. So now, remember, we do need a receiver at some point. We also need an offensive line. Here we are at pick 20. Here's what we've got. Available. All right, let's go. Let's go. I, I mean, to, stop right I, there. JC Latham and Amarius Mims right next to each other. Let's hold on, hold on. Debate. But also, Jackson Power Johnson hey, is available as well. Power Johnson, nobody's trying to hear that bullshit. I'm JC Latham, JC Latham and Mims is right there. Move on. Thank you. Stop right there. Okay. Who are you gonna take? Let's Which one? Who are Latham. you gonna take? Who do you want? Freak. I'd rather have Latham than Mims because at least there's playing. There's enough playing time. I don't know. Uh, M I know Mims has got all the measure, but it's like eight games in college, man. I don't know if I can go off that and feel good. Bro, but Mims is so, like, the way he moves, man. But J.C. Latham is like the Cadillac, though. Like, Mims? Okay, okay. Now, I'll put it like this. I have a, yeah. I have a, I'm sorry, Amarius, but this is the God's honest truth. I've literally watched J.C. Latham his entire college career. You know I'm a Bama fan. Yeah. The only reason why I was so hard set on Amarius Mims is because, in my mind, I just thought J.C. Latham was just out of the realm of possibility. Like, I really did. I was like, dude, there's no way he's going to be anywhere close but if J.C. Latham is there with the Marius Mims, you got to go J.C. Latham. That's the only player that I would take over a Marius. But I would go J.C. Latham. Okay. All right. We're going to draft Latham. You think he can start day one, right, Tackle? Hell yes. Okay. All right. Here we go. We got our future Tackle. Okay, now we're on the clock again at 31. Do we want to look at replacing Brandon Ayuk now, or do we want to go best available? Now you what are your thoughts? What's best you available? Here, let's go. Let's go wide receiver first, and see. We've got uh, Donnie Mitchell, Lad McConkey, Troy Franklin, Roman Wilson. Ooh, I don't like. I do not like these options. These at are all. trash options. I don't like Hell it. No. Now, Adani Mitchell. Adani Mitchell. A lot of people are very, very high on him. In fact, he's on my thumbnail. He's he's on my thumbnail. But nice. I don't know, man. Uh, I like Troy Franklin. I just don't like him this early. Let's go get our linebacker. We got a we linebacker. Whoa, whoa! I'm not drafting a linebacker. Full stop. We're not. I am not drafting a linebacker. Let's see right what now. we got. Let's see what we're not getting. Okay. A Oh, and look what's well, hold on, and look what's best available. Look what uh, well, well, well. Look I don't who's care. best available. I'm drafting Bonex. I don't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, uh, okay. let's get serious. So, if we got our tackle of the future, okay, mm -hmm. 
we got to go we got to go defense we got to go defense right let me read let me read what uh hold on a second i'm going to give you the breakdown i've got the whole pff drafts whatever guy is cedric gay gone uh i don't know probably not maybe actually here Hold on, I'm gonna read you what they said about Adani Mitchell. Okay. Hold on, wait it. a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We are uh, bugging, we are bugging the fuck out. Why? Let's get a center. We just gotta tackle. I would love to, but don't you think it's a little high to draft Frazier? At 31? Let's see, is uh is Barton still there? No, I don't think so. I think he's gone. Go to, go to centers, go to centers. Well, he's gonna show up as a tackle on here because he played tackle. But I know that he's projected to be a center, but he's he's a tackle in this draft. So we got Morgan. Oh, I would love to get Morgan right now. We got your future right and left tackle. Get out of here. But no, he's not there. Actually, in fact, actually, you got your tackle. Morgan's going to be a guard. Now you got an elite guard and an elite tackle. What are we Chris, talking about right now? You no, know, you know what we need to go do? You know what, what we can get? Let's get the best bang for the buck. Let's get the best safety in the draft right now. We need a free know. safety. I, I think he's already gone. I overall, think he's gone. Go check. No, I think he's gone. I think he just got drafted. In fact, here, I can look at it right now. Let me look at the draft. Yeah, Newbin went 28. That's it. He's already gone. He's a goner. All right, let me let me read about Adani Mitchell, okay? Six foot one. Oops, hold on. Gee, many Christmas. What happened to it? What happened? Where's Adani? I think it was 115. Hold on. Gosh. So stupid. What are you looking trying for? Trying to scroll trying to scroll through it instead of looking at it. Uh the draft guide. I'm just looking at the draft guide. I want to see what PFF has to say about him. Okay. And I had it right in front of me, and then I right, blew I it. I blew it. There we go, 145. That's what I was looking for. Here we go. I've got like the full like guide, his full profile here. Okay, six foot one, 205 pounds. Got it. His strengths, fast and fluid, runner for his size, fast footwork, quick release off the line, effective, effective shoulder dip when running by defenders, understands the nuances of how to get open, especially deep. Weaknesses. The shoulder dip to avoid contact in his routes is good, but he needs to be more willing to chop defenders' hands away as well. Release speed is fast, but there are some false and wasted steps. Uh, he could do a better job of attacking the ball in the air. His body language and effort can be very different when he's a primary receiver versus when he's not. His player comp is T. Higgins. Interestingly enough. Isn't that lovely? Isn't I, that uh, lovely? I'm gonna tell you this right now, man. He I ran a four three four forty. It's six foot one two oh five. Not mad at that. <laughs> but okay, that's his yeah. draft profile. There you go. Yeah, my only thing about him is that he's more of a pure receiver, and I don't know if that's what Kyle wants because we've already traded BA. So I mean that's a that's a good that's a good BA comp though, right? Six what he can he block? I don't know. I don't know if he's a willing blocker or not. I'm not sure. Is I haven't Kenny watched tape on him. Still out there? What's his name? Leggett. Oh, probably. Probably. Hold on. I'm probably. not impressed. I'm not impressed. You're right, SH9 again. You, you're right. I'm, I'm not really feeling him, to be honest with you. And you guys know, like, if I, I give it up. Yeah, if there's Leggett. But he's his ADP is much later. All right. Okay, here's the other option. Here's the other option. We can trade back. We can trade back 10 spots or something like that. We've got two trades available. Let's see who's interested. What do they want? Uh, we got trades. Uh, let's see. Texans have pick 42. That's that's perfect. For what? Let's uh let's off from 31. They give us 42 and mm, 86. 
We can offer him 31 and 94 for 42 and 59. I just don't want to get. I just don't want to get caught up in, Ooh, in like. We can give him one seventy six as well. I'm not trying to get caught up in winning the draft. I want to get. I want to get the players that we need, right? So all I'm saying is, is that we picked up J C. Latham. We got our tackle for the future, mm -hmm. right? So go get Morgan and get our our guard, our right guard forever. Just saying. Just saying. Is he, I yeah. <sighs> You know what? You know dude, he would be a like very him. good guard. You know he would be a very good guard at the very least. If he can't well, why, play tackle, he's going to be a very good guard. All right, but why would you get Jordan Morgan when Christian Haynes is right there? The actual best guard in the draft. You know because, what I mean? Because Morgan is going to translate to being an elite guard at the next level, I think. You just, thank you. Thank you. You that's all that matters. You just like this kid. But really I do. But that, but that doesn't mean that he's better than the best guard in the draft. I mean, I just how want to know not? your opinion on that. How is he? Not, okay, he's not a guard. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah, listen. I if you know, it doesn't matter. It does not matter because he, to me, he's the most polished tackle in the draft. I think he could be our right tackle for the next ten years. Personally, All that's right. that's what I think about him. However, that's however. How, exactly. However, Comma. he's got short arms. So a lot of people are trying. Just like, hold on, hold on a second. Wait a minute. Didn't you ask it? Who did you ask was still there at, at uh, center? Who did you ask? Uh, Graham Barton. How do you know he's going to be a good center? He just played left tackle his whole senior year because he's he played, played center when he was a freshman. Yeah, he's actually played sparingly. It. Say that. Oh, <laughs> Now you Four, you, three years ago, three years ago, <laughs> because he was decent three years ago at it. All right, bro. This I'm is just saying it's because you like this kid. That's all I'm saying. I love him. I'm, I'm not saying we have to draft him. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying I'm just making a, a claim for him. Just, I mean, what do you want to go adopt him? I, I what might. Is he, what is he, your father? What are you, his father? <laughs> What are you, his father? <laughs> what, are you, what are you, his father? <laughs> are you his dad? You his I mean, dad? come on. Uh, you want to be his dad? Good. All right, <laughs> or so we look. could go with the best center available, Zach Frazier. Then let's go Zach I Frazier. wouldn't be mad at that. We both love centers. Zach Frazier, even though I think Zach Can, can we meet in the middle at Frazier? No, because all we're doing is meeting in the middle. It's actually a horrible value pick. He's okay, not a so, 31st overall pick. So, okay, here are our options. We can basically go Mitchell, Frazier, Morgan, or we can try to trade back. Those are our options. And we don't have BA anymore. We don't have BA anymore. Go get the receiver. Okay. All right, I'm fine with that too. Go get I think receiver. Mitchell's fine. I think Mitchell's fine. Go get the receiver. Oh, that took way too long. <laughs> okay. Here we are at pick 63. Now, here's another question. While we are here. Jordan Morgan's still there. Do you? I bet you he's not. Um, but also, also, and if he is, we're drafting him. But if, uh, <laughs> do you think the 49ers are going to make all 11 picks? Because I don't. I think they're probably going to make around nine. Well, Yeah, they because they ain't got the money. Okay, okay, that's fair. I don't, I don't think that's the case. We can go get a running back. No, it's too early. We need to wait till round three. Ooh, yeah. God, dude. There's Hello, your there's your guard. He's there. Yeah, your guy's there. My guy's not. That's interesting. It's weird how that worked out. I, I don't care. You can throw shade. All right, so <laughs> like, like. <laughs> Like I'm bothered, so <laughs> I, uh, so uh, we got our receiver, we got our tackle, um, best guard in the draft available right there. That's that's a that's enticing right there. I'm not gonna lie. Mm. Well, you know what the Niners do? The Niners always pick like against each other. Let's see what edges are around. 
for oh, 63. Jeez, man. I know, <sighs> but it's the Niners. And you know what else? We do need a good uh, shade. We already got a three technique in Collins. Um, I mean, a three technique in um, Javon Hargraves. And then we just got Jordan Elliott. He's going to be a shade. But Collins is going to be a three tech. We need another shade. We need another they Justin uh yeah yeah that's too, too that's too rich it's too early for these guys to me i wouldn't take an edge here but go to d tackle all right let's go to d tackle you know this is a very weird uh d tackle draft uh yes it is oh ho, ho, ho. doorless is there sweats there sweats there sweats there we gotta go sweat, right? Michael Hall Jr. Hold on. So it's Devondre Sweat. We do need an edge. Now, before we go to Devondre Sweat, Devondre Sweat, let's look at corner real quick. Because corner, okay. we haven't we haven't touched corner at all. I think corner is gonna be there next round. I think there's gonna be some good we'll see. But we'll we'll double check, make sure. Get up here and make your own picks, James. What did he say? <laughs> like one thing for sure. I'm not putting y'all on the clock. <laughs> yeah, we take too long, huh? Uh, Max Melton's there. I love me Max, some Max Melton. I'll tell you that right now. I love me some Max Melton. I love Cam Hart. Oh, I love Josh around. Newton. Yeah, they're still around. Let's go up, then. Yeah, I mean, Max I feel Mel like we're going to have some good well, options next round. We're going to have some good options this next round. All right, go ahead and get to Vondre Sweat. I like Sweat. I love Sweat. That'd be great. Yeah, get to Vondre Sweat. <laughs> you know how many picks we would have forfeited if we were actually on the clock? It's cool. Get to Three Vondre teams Sweat. just skip the 49ers. Okay. Oh, everybody's favorite. Brendan Rice That's is right there. Man. So there, Brendan Rice. Get out of here. Yeah. Okay. 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 So what? Uh, we want to look at corner. Um, right. We want to look at. Should we see what tight ends are available? Oh yeah. I mean, Kate's some good ones still. I love Theo Johnson personally. Johnson, the dog too. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. some good ones. All right, we got some options. So that's too early there. Let's see if we so let's go back to O line real quick. We've only had one offensive lineman in this draft. This is a deep line draft. Let's not, let's not forget about that. Cedric Van Pan, Bo Limmer's still there. Okay. Uh, go Cooper to guard. Baby. No, it's just interior O line. It's all together. Centers, guards, they're all right here. BB's a guard. A good one, too. All right, give Van Pan. Oh, well, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We're making this decision together. Okay. I'm sorry. This, I'm sorry. This is a draft marriage. All right. Sorry. Sorry. I need you to hear me out. I need you to hear me out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, let me see what corners are available. Oh, Hearts there. We can't. We, Newton, we, Newton's going to be there too. Okay. 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 Man. I think yeah. we're going to be okay. I think we're going to be okay. Go get a center. All right. Man. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. I'll I'll deal with it. Get him right there. Bang. All right. Do it. Woo! Woo! I feel like pops. Woo! <laughs> bang, 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 bang. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So we still want to get a tight end, but okay. We're running up on it, but we got like three picks coming up here real, real tight. So. Let's look at corner again real quick. See what we got at corner. Do you think at corner, man? Uh, I got to go. I got to go with Newton. I got to go with Newton. He's, to me, by far the best guy available, and everybody else that I like is gone. So I'm going to go with Newton. Do you think? What I like about Newton is he can play both man and zone equally effective so uh god dude i mean we could just fix the whole offensive line right now we just fix it all bb's there my mm -hmm. god the whole right side just got fixed in one draft you're welcome 
All right, who else is left? We got Tavondre Sweat. I love that pick. I do too. We, we just got who else did we just pick up for as a DB? Who else we get? No, uh, we just got Newton. We got Newton. DB. So we got our DB. We got an interior defensive lineman. We've got a center, a tackle, and our wide receiver. Kind of like this. I'm not gonna lie. What, what tight ends are there? Mm, we I still have. About, I don't know about Jalen Graham or uh, or uh, Cam Latu. Uh, you mean Willis or Latu? Yeah, Willis or Latu. Sorry. Uh, go to, let's see. Because uh, I I would love to go linebacker, but they've done enough in the offseason at linebacker. I think. Jaheen yeah. Bell is still there. Yeah, there's there's time for Bell. Theo Johnson, man, 6'6", 4540. Just saying. 6'6", 4540. Just throwing it out there. BB is still you, there, too. You can't teach. I know. That's what I'm saying. We literally could fix the whole right side of the line right now. But then we're then, – hold on. How far is Jaheim Bell down? Um. I mean, we got like two picks in the next three. Like one of these guys is going to be here. They get BB Either right now. Bell or Theo. They yeah. get BB. Dude, oh my god! If this happened, <laughs> you know how excited I would be. <laughs> It'd be lit. And they we just all literally start. fixed the whole <laughs> they, right side of the they line. All would start. <laughs> this is not happening. But they would all start. This is not the yeah, well. You never know, man. Crazier things happen. You, we you always I think you have a pulse. In. Okay, Theo Johnson's still there, and Jaheim Bell's there. What's leaving? Um, receiver. Uh, we got offensive line. We got our D tackle. We got our receiver. We got our corner. We need a safety. We need a Go tight end. Pick. Go safety real quick. We need a safety. We need a tight end. I know we're not training yeah. IU, uh, Ramon, but this is if we did, though. So let's go to safety. Malik Mustafa is still there. This isn't real. This isn't real. Yeah, James Williams is still it's there. Real. This isn't real. It's real. It's real. It's so real. This is exactly how the draft is going to go. There, this bro. is how the draft is going to go. This is identical. You know it. And I know it. <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> you know it. And I know it. This James is how Williams it's going to go on draft James night. Williams it's exactly. James Williams. Now that's the quote, baby, right there. James All right, Williams. Let's, James what, what Williams. is real? What, it, what is real is the tight ends are going to be there. So let's go tight end. You take cool that. with Theo? Okay. Dog. Whoa, 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 whoa. You said take that. That's Theo. I was saying somebody said Diddy is watching this, and I said take that, take that. Oh, I was, I'd love some. I my was bad. You can't say Diddy. take that. I'm, all right, all right, go James Williams. I mean, okay. And now we're where it doesn't matter. Although they'll get some sleeper here, I'm sure. Oh, Frank Gore, there's our running back. There's our dude. That's that's meant to be right there. No Diddy. Hey, hey, Joshua Hill. I know Joshua Hill. He a uh, he a battle rap fan. Hit him with the no Diddy. <laughs> hey, what's next? Can, can you see? Can can we see the uh, the draft list, please? Our draft. Yeah, Frank Gore. Oh, our draft. Our draft. Jace McClellan is still available. That's a sneaky good pick. He's always hurt, though. It's because he's, not bro, always. it's because he's from Alabama. No, Everybody's thinking he's No, it's Alabama. not. Jason McClellan, before he got hurt, come on. Tell me one person that, that you up. don't like from Bama. Come on. A Bryce uh, Young. Okay, all right. Yeah, A year yeah. later. Be quiet. Thanks. Thanks. Be quiet. Thanks. Be quiet. Thanks. Be quiet. Tonight is the night that we ride. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Thank you, TZ. Jason McCullen is nice. Okay. All right. I'll take Frank Gore Jr. All right. So what what do we have left? We already got a safety. I feel like we drafted everything we need. Now it's just and we're picks 211, 215, and 251. Like 
It's just take whatever you want at this point. No, it's not. No, it's not. See if we can go yes, get a. Uh, yes. It see is. if we can get another corner. No, no, no. See if we can get a linebacker. Now it's time to get another linebacker. All right. All right. Or we can get another edge. We don't. We still didn't get an edge. There's not going to be anybody you like Man, you this know. late. I don't know any of these bums. Me neither. Why right, they got to be bums though? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's They're trying to live out their dream. Let me go. Uh, go ahead and get Jace McClellan. Sorry, Frankie. <laughs> it's not a Bama pick. Jace McClellan is nice. You know what? I'm gonna get Gore also just because. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> just All right. So what's the, what else is left? Let's look at some of these receivers. Let's double up on a receiver because you know that's what the 49ers do. They draft one late and uh they draft one early. 6'3, 185. They love their UTSA guys. You know they do. Yeah. Ah they ah. love their UTSA guys. Mm. Ooh, slot guy. Slot catches, screen catches, screen yards, slot yards. Let's see what they're okay. You know, now now is the time to take a flyer on like a freak. You know what I mean? Like somebody that runs like a three nine, but they got bricks <laughs> for hands. They got like <laughs> three nine. You know what I'm saying? There's always like these weird. <laughs> Dudes in the draft, <laughs> like for some reason they just blow the whole draft out of the water, and it's just like, yeah, but he only has he only has seven thumbs. And that's it's a little weird. You can get over the thumbs, he'll be amazing. It's like, what? The fuck? Like, it's I love I love the analysis. Here's a guy. All right, thanks for that. Appreciate that. Here's a guy. There's always that guy. Like, there's a guy that always like kills the draft. Seven and it's like, he runs a three seven, nine. Seven two. He's seven two with size eighteen shoes. He was born at three hundred and fifty five pounds. It's not me. <laughs> like the fuck. Like trying to be, it's like it's almost like the freak of the week. It's like there's always this freakish looking guy that goes into the NFL. Like, yeah, we're gonna get him to play today. You see, you know, he's from <laughs> Uganda. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, dude, I honestly don't care at this point. That's why I would have traded these picks. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. Tulia, that's uh, Tua's little brother. Hey, Go there on. we go. The right-handed Tua, come on. Oh, actually, here. You know what? Let's let's well, replace Alan. Al. Let's, no, no, we're replacing Allen. That's happening right now. Who? We're replacing Brandon Allen. I don't I don't want what Allen about? here. Julia or Sam Hart? No. Oh, Devin Leary. Slovis. Yo, Devin Leary. Slovis. Slovis. Devin Leary. Why Slovis, Slovis. over there? Evan Leary is, is Brock Purdy reincarnated. All right. We'll go Leary. Go I'm this? not happy about it. I'm not happy about it. I'm, I honestly don't care that much. I'm just making a big deal out of nothing. I want this. Right I want this. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Our draft is cold. It's never going to happen. There's a flyer on, our, on some running backs. Know what you mean? D uh, D uh, Durham put out um, Isaac Garendo. Is Isaac Garendo in there? What position does he play? Running back. We already took a running back. We already took your stupid running back. I mean, we can take, take another, another one. Nice. No, we're not. No, we're not going to. Now's the time to take your linebacker. There's a million of them right here. Why do you think they're there? Everybody's here. It's pick 251. You think we're just getting some like blue chip prospect at this point? Uh, do you know what team we play for? Our starting quarterback is Mr. Fucking Irrelevant. I got you. Great. That's, oh, Tim Smith. Now that's a nice little MP. I mean, I know Tim Smith. Keep going. Never mind. No, no, no of course. Mind. Of course you do. Why? Because you I were to Alabama. God, well, I, know dude. I know he played there. I'm just saying. It is not it one is. Oregon player was drafted in this whole thing. I'm not happy right Oregon now. Oregon is a real school. Oregon's everybody <laughs> loves Oregon. Oregon is one of the best schools of all time. <laughs> all right. What are we going to do? Let's just take Rashid one. Rashid Ali is a really good uh, running back from Marshall. I really like his We already style. took running back. We're not taking another one. Well, hold on. Wait a minute. Elijah Mitchell is on the trade block, right? Yeah, but that's why we just took a running back. 
But we're never going to use Jordan Mason. If we're going to take a running back, first of all, we're going to take Isaiah Davis because he's a scat back. We're that's there what we're going to do. It brings something different usage out of the Jordan Mason. All right, I've seen. Uh, come on, Jordan Mason is not getting used at all. If if we're taking a running back, it's going to be Davis because he's a quick, quick little guy. He's something different. That's mm -hmm. what we would take. Get the scat back. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. Isaiah Davis. There we go. There we go. Let's analyze another, our draft. Another like, you guys are the best drafters of all time. Okay. They didn't like our sweat pick, which is a little bizarre. A little bizarre. Crushed it with the BB pick. Mm -hmm. Love the Latham pick, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. James Look at that. They love Newton. Look at Look the at Chase that. McClellan pick. Stop playing. Oh, my gosh. And best. Isaiah Davis was a better. Look at that. They gave Davis a better shot. Look at they loved your Devin Leary pick. I know. Yeah, I, 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 I said Devin pick. Leary was a bad pick. I, I, well, oh, well, what were you going to say? Devin, I know you want him to be from Alabama. You wanted him to be from Alabama. He's not. He's from fucking Kentucky. Devin Leary. <laughs> I like Devin Leary. Theo Johnson was uh, a bad pick. Should have been Slovis. My James Williams pick. It should have been Slovis. Should have been Slovis. Connor BB is Slovis. the best pick of our draft. But they're saying. of course it was him and Latham. Obviously, Latham. They're not uh, going for this draft. I would be happy if they did this. If this was I, the draft, are you kidding me? I'd be up all night celebrating. Although I don't like that they traded Ayuk. Outside of trading Ayuk, <laughs> although they wouldn't get Latham then, so that makes it ooh, it makes it tough. It I makes mean, it tough it, now. Right, so let's so, so let's ask this. Let's let's ask this. Is the chat? Are you guys okay with this draft? If we traded BA for this, would you be yeah, okay? You with guys. This? Now you're gonna have to rewind and relook at it because I uh, already got out of it. But I. I know. I know. I'm ready to do the other one. The more realistic one where BA right, doesn't get traded. Well, let's go. Okay, how do we want to do our settings? Because this is what I had last time. Public versus PFF, I had in the middle. Uh, care for positional value, I had a little bit less. Draft for needs, I had a little bit more. Should I put that in the middle? Put it in the middle. Okay, randomness. I, I don't want randomness. I want low randomness, yeah? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe slight randomness. It, it has it at slight randomness. I need medium randomness. Oh, you want it to be more random? I don't want it to be like no, super playing, random. I'm just, with you, bro. I'm just playing with you, bro. Do we want to care for positional value more or less? Leave it where it's at. It's so uh, tough. You don't know what it's going to do. I don't know what it's going to do, bro. All right. Let's just, we'll, we raise the draft for need. So that's what we got. All right. Seven rounds, turbo. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get it. All right. We are staying pat. Pick 31. This is like my worst nightmare, by the way. Is exactly what just happened. And this oh, yeah. is your worst nightmare as well. All right. So what, what just happened? Oh, oh, Jordan no. Morgan's available. <laughs> but look at the best player available. This is, and I think they could go with Newbin if he's there. That's the crazy thing. Oh, man. No. Where's uh, everybody's gone? Amiria Smith is They're gone. They're all gone. Yeah. The best tackle available is my guy, Jordan Morgan. Well, we're not picking that disaster. I gotcha. Yeah, I got it. Thanks. We're going, Thanks. Mike. We're going with Larry's favorite, Michael Penix Jr. <laughs> what about Chop Robinson? I know. I know everybody loves chop. Everybody loves chop and chop. Hey, chops the other guy on my thumbnail. Not a, I don't think he's just a number. He's not 31 overall. That's what I'm saying. I don't think so either. You got to go. I don't know that any of these guys are, Ugh. they, they would go. I really think that they would end up with Newbin. I'm not joking you. I don't know why. This is not good. And we already did trades. I don't like this because this just looks us. This makes us look so bad. This is not good. Hold on. There's a well. There's a lot of trades. <laughs> a lot of people are willing to trade with us. 
Who wants to trade with this? Oh, I like Carolina. Listen, Carolina, this is a realistic trade where they want to get the fifth year option out of a player. So we trade back two spots. We go to the second round. They go to round one, but we pick okay. up something extra from it. What do they want? Uh, let's see. Let's offer. Obviously, they'll do that. Um, Jesse, while we're doing this, do you know, it just seems a little unrealistic. What does? Uh, do, you, do you think that they honestly had the brass to trade out of the first round after us not having a first round pick for three freaking years? I do. I do. If you're trading back two spots and there's multiple guys that you like or that you find value in, I think so. I think that there is actually a possibility of that. Isn't that there has to be? Isn't that us kind of be us kind of being too cool for school? Like, I mean, just it may be. Okay, but what if our guy's not there? I would trade back if that if that trade presented itself, where we get thirty one and pick up an extra pick type of thing. I would do that, but okay, let's let's keep it. We're just going to keep it as chalk. We're going to keep it like that. Mm. So the quite okay. Will for Zach Frazier. Do we want? Right. Let's go interior offensive line. Let's see what let's see what let's see what tackles are available for us. Let's go to tackles. Let's just the only tackles available are my guy. Try to do it, okay? My guy. Okay. My oh. guy. <laughs> my guy. That's who's available. Is my guy, bro? You're a dick. Let me right just, there. Right. There he that, is. Look at that bum sitting there, just ready to be picked. Oh. Uh. But King, here's what King. I will say. I think there's a chance that one of these guys are there round two, potentially. And I would be fine with either one of them round two also. All right. So what can't we get right away in the first round? Because I want our first round pick to be like an impact player. So we can't pick a center. I mean, Newbin's by far the best center. I mean, uh, excuse me, safety in the draft. I mean, maybe that's your guy. I don't know. TJ Tampa, potentially. I like TJ Tampa, but man, 31 is rich for TJ. I think he might realistically fall to the 40s. Maybe even 50s. I mean, fuck it, man. Take the safety, man. Oh. We signed. Famous we signed last words. Uh, yeah, we signed. Uh, we signed Colton McKibbis. Colton McKibbis is starting this year. He's starting. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what are we going right. to do? Jake Brindle's making he's top thirteenth player in this on our team. He's starting. So really, if we're going to look at anybody who's going to play, we're going to draft somebody that can actually play guard for us. So it may hold one. It may be your guy. Oh, it might be Jordan Morgan. Hey, look at that. He could start at guard and then eventually move out to right tackle. Maybe. Yo, no? Lyle. Yeah. Lyle no. said, "Just get Knicks." <laughs> <laughs> Bo Nix. <laughs> Yo, I like Lyle. Lyle's like, fuck it. Just get Bo Nix. <laughs> Who cares? He, Lyle Make just wants to burn it all down, off. doesn't he? Lyle just wants to burn it all down, doesn't Lyle, he? That's why I'm fucking with Lyle. Lyle chose violence. <laughs> Pick a kicker. Pick a kicker. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right. We can't trade. I'd be. You know, I'd be happy with why, Morgan here. It, I think we need to explain for people who are just coming in and out of this show right now. We've okay. already done a draft where we traded where we Brandon traded Ayuk. Brandon and Ayuk. Yes. And we traded up and we and we boy, already, did we kill that mother. Oh, we killed that draft. That draft was easy. This draft, this shit Way right harder. here is much harder to do because we're doing the draft without any without no any, trading. That's the rule. No trading. No trading. I don't want to just pick. I don't. I just don't want to pick offensive line for the sake of picking offensive line. I want to. Get I think it's Morgan or Newbin. Those are my picks. Morgan or Newman or Frazier. I guess I would be okay with Frazier. I'm not happy with any of these, by the way. That's me personally. But it is what it is. Like we can't. But I think this is a realistic scenario where. We're not necessarily blown away. You know what? Let's just get Troy Franklin. No, well, shut up. So we don't. <laughs> so we need. 
<laughs> All right, let's be let's be pragmatic. Here we go. Right now, we need best player available. The offensive line that we need is still in the draft, okay? We still need a better offensive line, but this offensive line got us to the Super Bowl. What hurt us the most this year was interior defensive line in our secondary, in our secondary. All right. So if we still have BA intact, I would say either go get the safety now because that's somebody that can play right away. That's a real first round pick. Mm -hmm. We're going to get the best safety in the draft. He's going to get on the field right away. So we already solved the problem of not getting value at 31. Then we'll figure out what we're going to do down the line. But for now, I'm not interested in getting a first round pick that is not going to get on the field and be a plus athlete. So get the safety. He's the best safety in the draft. Okay. And I, I agree. I mean, he's clearly the best safety in the draft. So, okay. I don't feel great about it. But I don't like this. I don't like this. What are you, but, but what but, are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? See, you haven't seen Christian Haynes is still there. You know how stupid we'd have been picking up your dummy from Arizona? All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Calm down. Take it easy. <laughs> Take it easy. I'm liable to cut the stream right now. I'm sorry. I'll I'm sorry. do it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, all right, okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, uh, let's see. We need a tackle. Oh, neither of our guys were there. Neither of the guys were there that I was hoping. Now we're really screwed. We should have taken Morgan. Now what are they going to do? Blake Fisher what are they going to do tackle. now? Oh, okay, cool. Let's take another Notre Dame tackle oh, who's probably no, going to suck at the no, next level. No, 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 no. So, hmm, we got to go, we got to go O-line, or we got to go interior defensive line right now. All right, let's, let's see. I I love Jenkins. I'm not going to lie. His dad was in the NFL. That's always good pedigree. Let's see who's on the interior O-line. Christian Haynes is there. Should we just go with the best offensive lineman available? not like we're reaching and, and, and he's, he's a right guard reach. yeah go ahead get him and he's a right guard it's not and a he's a right he'll actually make the he'll, yeah he can actually like fight make right an now, impact, by the way. yeah like jake brindle is the center uh and colton mckibbitz is our right tackle the only position on our right on our offensive line that's at large right now is right guard so we just got the best right guard in the draft that's good we just got the best safety in the draft we got the best right guard in the draft we're looking all right let's it's go it's not awful it's not too ugly. It's not ideal, mm-hmm. but it ain't it ain't horrible. It is, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. So now let's go interior defensive line. Let's try to at least look. Okay, right, let's see what we got. <laughs> Oops, that's offensive line. Yeah. Old yeah. habits die hard. Jeez. Oh, Limmer's still there too. Hold on. I don't think Feliciano's locked in as a uh, right guard, uh, Shardal. I don't think he's locked in. Michael Hall Jr. still there. Michael Hall, yeah, that's. I'm not mad at that. McKinley Jackson, although he's going to fall a little bit later. Uh, Makai Wingo. Okay. Wingo's okay. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. We're all right. Okay. All right. All right. We got guys. All right, so let's go corner. Let's look at corner. I think three round three is a sweet spot for corners. That's me personally, but I love Cam Hart. Mm-hmm. We already got Newton last time. We know that Newton's going to be there probably on our next pick. Um, what else is there? Do we still? I mean, we have so many receivers already. Let's on look the at line. Edge. Yeah, I know. I know. Let's look at Edge. There's your guy from Alabama. <laughs> Hold on. Let me see. Who is it? Uh, 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 Egby? 
Yeah. yeah. You see, you see my boy. You see my man. Yeah, I see. I see him. I see, see him. My guy? I, yep, totally see him. I see him right there. Mm, there hold on, I'm about to, he's uh, gonna stay there. I'm about to look right now, Shardo. What does he want? He said, "Do I have any idea how much we played John Feliciano?" Um, mm-hmm. it's like a fifty-fifty split. I only see his name on uh, Sports Track. Here. There it is. Yeah, they're all fine. I'll uh, find it. We got paid uh, 2.7. Oh, how much we paid, not played. I thought you said played. Mm-hmm, paid. Uh, oh, I like Sione, but we already got our safety. I don't know. I feel like. Go get your tight end. That's nah, too early. He'll be there. He'll be there. Well, this is this is my this is my thing. Think about most best need, best available. <clears throat> so okay. we just we already got best need, best available with two picks. We got we got our free safety, best available safety. We got our right guard, best available guard. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we need a we tight need a corner. end, and we need we a need corner. A tight end. All right, and we need an interior defense alignment. So we need a well. well right. Listen, if we're if we're looking at hold on, if we feel like we really need an interior defensive lineman, which I don't necessarily disagree, I don't think that we just are overloaded with talent there. Then I would mm-hmm. say let's go, Michael Hall. At ninety four, I mean, again, this in real life. Teams get. Hey, hold on, hold on. Think of we got to be right? realistic too. We have to be realistic he, too. He's not going to be there. He's not going to be there at one twenty four, right? So realistic. He's if that's the guy that you like, he's not going to be there when you pick next. Mm. I don't love any of these people in front of him. We already yeah. got our guard. Don't need that. Yeah, We're not get drafting him. a tackle now. Go get him. Got our safety. I don't. I don't love Jerry and Jones. Me neither. I think there's other corners I like better. We got our safety. We're not oh, running. Right. Right. I don't. Yeah, about to say yeah. About to say they already looked at him. Yeah. Let's go. 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 Okay. Michael. Holt. All right. We'll draft him. Oh my god! Cooper keeps falling there every single time. I feel like a dumbass. I know, uh, but we got the best one. It, whatever. Yeah. All right. We need a corner, and we need a tight end. We already have tons of corners, and we just picked up a corner in free agency. I don't care. I don't. You half should. Half of care. them are bums. Half of them are bums. That's true. But 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 let's go get a tight end to really help out George. I don't want to And that. here's the other thing, by the way, the picking up uh what's his name from New Orleans? Uh Isaac Yadam. Yeah, bro, everybody is blowing <laughs> that way. Why Everybody's are you like, on him, Doc? <laughs> I'm not uh, crapping on him, but I just I don't understand how everybody's like, oh man, we we just got the guy opposite. No, we didn't. Has anybody watched him play? Like, so many people are hyping him up. I, he's a special teamer who can be a spot starter. I don't think he's anything. He's like 27. He's been in the league forever. If he was going to be that good, we would have seen it by now. I'm not saying he's awful, but he's not like the guy. And we don't have the guy opposite right now. That's what I'm saying. That's why I think a corner still would be good. Hey, nice. So uh, look, I mean, I guess. <laughs> so, all right, go get your corner then. I mean, I hate to repeat, but Newton to me is the clear best corner left. So, all right, we got him. So you got your corner. We got two O linemen. We got one O lineman, right? One O lineman. Cedric Gray. We don't have a tackle. Available? We still don't have a tackle. By the way, go get Cedric Gray. And Isaac Garendo still available? Okay, okay, listen. I don't know anything about him, but I like the name. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> he went to Utah. He's a big Samoan. You know he's strong. 
Don't know anything about him. But no, no, no. we don't know. No, the tackle ship has <laughs> sailed. The tackle ship has sailed, bro. It's it's it's. We're not going to get a tackle at all in the draft, though. We'll find something, but go get go get uh Cedric Gray. Uh. Who else? Who's who's on the draft? Can I see the rest of the draft? Hold Not on, the rest of the draft. On. Can I see our draft list? What we've got thus far? Who we've drafted? Yes. Who have we drafted thus far? Oh, I don't know that you can look at that. Can you? If you oh, can, that's, somebody, somebody help. Yeah, that's awesome. You guys are the best. So let's go ahead and look for a tight end. Let's get a tight end. Let's either look for a tight end. You got to understand, yo, Cedric Gray is very good. I I understand. I understand. Okay. 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 Well, okay, let's let's talk about why we would take Gray. Because we don't know if Greenlaw is going to come back and be Obviously. Greenlaw. Right. We also know after this year, he's probably going to want a rework deal. Right? Right. Okay. I so I can... I, look at this. I'm listening. So stay at Cedric Gay for now, but mm -hmm. let's go to tight end. Let's see what we got at tight end. I'm not going to like anybody at tight end enough, probably. I have an open mind, man. Don't be so skeptical. My yeah, guy's John there. Theo's there. still there. You like Shaheem. He's going to be there. All right. Dude, we got to we got to pick. We got to pick in three more picks. Remember. Then go get Cedric Gray. Okay. We'll go get Gray. That's a hell of a pick. Cedric Gray. I agree. I At some point, you're just getting talent. I totally understand. Totally understand that. Who's available now? Tell you who's not available. Your the tackle. Name. Tackle. That's <laughs> he over. got drafted in three picks. He got drafted in the, those three picks. The Golly, the man. Go to tight end. Now let's go to tight end. Did uh, we get interior defensive tackle yet? Yeah, we got Michael Hall, right? Mike, Mike. Yeah, yeah, we got Michael Hall. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Okay. Right. Go, Theo. Let's go. Stop playing all games. Right. We like Theo. Yeah. We like Theo. It's all right. Some of these guys are going to be the same. Mm -hmm. Tell you who we're not going to draft. We're not going to draft your stupid quarterback. <laughs> we're going to we're <laughs> we're going to draft we're going to draft Slovis. That's what's going to happen. Okay. Uh Yo, Golden. <laughs> I like how yeah. Coach doesn't care about the health of the quarterback. <laughs> Eight quarterbacks. <laughs> so, all right. So, we've picked. This is kind of wild because you still you still don't have the draft in your head. So, we picked a, a safety. We picked best safety available. We picked best yep. guard available. Best guard available. Yep. Picked, uh, the in the whole draft, guard. not not just available, but in the whole draft, we got the best guard in the draft. Consensus best guard. We got the consensus best safety in the draft. That's a good. Some, that's a good start. Some might say we got damn near one of the best linebackers in the draft. We True. got we got a good interior True. D lineman. We got a yep. really big, fast tight end that can block. Yep. Who's six foot six? So, so let's go corner. We could be we got our corner. We got our corner. Oh, yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah. We got Newton. We got our corner. Yeah. All right. So, so right we now, we're just literally taking whatever. Yeah, let's go speed. Let's go. We got let's our take line. every tackle. Let's take every best tackle for the whole rest of the draft and hope one hits. <laughs> or we can get, <laughs> since or we, can since get, we didn't uh, take a single tackle. We can get Jordan Jefferson. Is that Je it's Jefferson Jordan? Sorry. Whatever. His um, name is. You. Jaheen Bell is still available. Jaheen Bell is still there. Go get Jaheen Bell, bro. You want to just double up on tight ends? I guess neither of them panned out last year, right? Yeah. Forget those fools. They was doing nothing but taking up Gatorade in jersey numbers <laughs> last year. Get Jaheen <laughs> Bell in here. Create some real competition. I'm tired. All right, all right. George right. coming to training camp like shit sweet. We coming to take you out, George. Can we just take like the two best? Just tackle, no, tackle. Now, Two no, best no, now, tackles. There you go. Now go get depth. Now go get depth. Go get depth. We didn't take a single tackle yet, which is likely from the 49ers, by the way. But now I feel like we should just take two of them. And then a quarterback. And then call it a day. <laughs> now, go get another running back. Get another running back. 
Get a running back. Forget tackle. Get a running back. Jates! No, I'm not <laughs> drafting him again. Like, come on, bro! Not He's drafting, right no. No, we're taking Frank Gore this time. Are you the feds? I know I am. That's fine. Okay, so we got two options at tackle. No, we don't, because they're gone. No, no. Get ah, a speed we're taking a guy from Michigan. He's a good... You know he's no. going to be decent. Get a speed threat. A what? Wide receiver? Huh? Where? What? A wide receiver? Yeah, get a speed threat. Get a returner. We God knows we need mm. a returner. Get a gadget guy. I don't know any of these guys left. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, here's a guy. Thanks, PFF. Thanks. <laughs> hey, here's a guy. Hampered with injuries. Perfect. Right up our alley. Tore his groin. He tore a meniscus. He broke his clavicle. Bulky would have drafted this guy three rounds ago. What are we talking about? This this draft is not uh, realistic. You know, you know, he's got real spa. <laughs> He's got speed. You know, and you here's know you here's the horrible thing. You literally are doing an impression of Larry doing a bulky impression. <laughs> this is like. <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. I'm cheating right now, but we're going to do this anyway. Isaac Garendo is gone. All right, look up uh, Jahar Jordan from Louisiana, uh, from uh, Louisville. Trey Benson from Florida State. Ooh, look up Trey Benson. Is he still there? Probably not. None of these guys. None of your guys are available, bro. There is nobody left. We're at the very Jaylen end of Robinson the draft. Jalen from Texas. Jalen Wright from Tennessee. Nope. None of them are available. It's crazy. All right. Um, no. Nope. I said Jace McClellan. And you let and Jace got drafted right before that's so hold on. Great. Hold on. Hold, good. Let him go. Let You're, him go. You are look at we didn't take we're taking a tackle. We didn't take You're a single a tackle. Piece of work. We're taking a tackle. And he's from Michigan. So there you go. There you go. Get let's a take a tackle. We didn't take right. a single tackle. Let's take a guy. Right. Elitism. When all the way to mission, you get drafted in the seventh round. You did great, kid. You did good. And now oh, we're taking Slovis. Well Where's Slovis at? Where's Slovis at? Give me Slovis. Go ahead, keep going down. Oh, okay, chill out, all right? You're acting like he's just... He's lower. No diddy. Let me see. Devin Leary! I'm taking Slovis. I'm ta no! All right. <laughs> I hope, took him last time. I hope this is the worst. I hope this is the worst grade. Slow. What the did worst. they get? Hold on. What, what did they give Larry last time? What'd they give him? I don't C, know. What was this? C minus? C minus, I think. Okay. These let's are see, let's see what they gave Slovis. Hold on. Let's see what they gave Slovis. C plus. There we go. That's a better pick. It was. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't like this draft was okay. It wasn't bad. I mean, Considering what was thrown our way, it wasn't bad. Best safety. We had best no. Guard. We had no tackles. No tackles Probably available to us, except, except like, for Morgan. Except for Morgan. I mean, we got Josh Newman, Cedric Gay, Theo. I like this draft. What do you guys think about this draft? I like. I like this draft actually a lot. For what we had to deal with, I like it a lot. I know no center, no tap. Well, we got a tackle. Who cares? Jaheim Bell and Theo Johnson. That's really going to help our offense. Go, I mean, go higher. And we picked up. Uh, we got Christian Haynes. Kyle can have his little mediocre offensive line, but at least we got our draft. We got our our guard. We got a blue chip guard at least. We got a blue chip guard. Right, and if you think about guard. it, that guard said that guard that guard position really hurt us this year, but. I think Michael Hall Jr. was a bit of a reach. It was. We were doing good until Michael Hall Jr. I don't know why they're saying Cedric Gray wasn't a fire pick. That's a. I think that's the best pick of the draft. I think it might be. We should have taken kicker. I know. You're right. We should have taken kicker. 
Wow, it was yo, a pretty pretty that. bad draft. What were we supposed to do, Sal? <laughs> what Sal, were we supposed to what do? Were we gonna do? Did you I, see what was available to us? I feel like we did a good job. But I will say this: trading up to go get BA. Seems that, like that draft was fire. Draft, we, that draft, was yeah, that fire. draft was fire. Oh, uh, we cooked. We cooked. We we we. We replenished the whole <laughs> look at him. Just, line. Look at him. Look at him. He's just trying to stir things up. He's like, I actually just got here. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but dog, no. we cooked. We got the whole offensive line fixed in the first draft. We got JC Latham. We picked up uh what center? We picked up the center from Georgia. Mm -hmm. We and picked we up uh DB from Donnie Mitchell. Uh, did we? Yeah. Remember we we took went wide receiver pick two. Oh yeah. We got we picked up the receiver because we um, traded BA and picked up Latham. And then we went Mitchell pick two. Our draft was fire. Rewind that. We had shit. BB. We had BB. We picked him up like round three or something. So nice. we got a good guard. Do you understand how wild that would be if they actually fixed the offensive line when he got when it got a tackle, we literally fixed. drafted a center, a tackle. We fixed the whole right side in that draft. Literally, yeah. I would start all of those guys probably day one. We fixed the whole right side in that first draft. Van that Brand, draft was fire. TV and Latham fixed. And we got the tight end from Penn State. And we got our receiver. Hold up. And in that draft, we picked up James Williams at safety from Miami. Yeah, and we got your stupid running back too. Jace McCullough's a good running back. Stop. <laughs> Stop. He's a good running he back. He brings up a good point. I forgot. Uh Cooper DeGene was is uh playing safety too. But he wasn't there, to be fair. I don't know. I don't know. I might like Newbin better. I'm not gonna lie. I might like Newbin better. I, everybody's high on on DeGene. I gotcha. I might like Newbin better. I'm just I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. But to be fair, people, most people project Cooper Jean to be better. I got you. That's fair. I I like Newbin a lot. That's just me. Yeah, but I mean, either Jackson, way, either right. way, he wasn't there. So it's not like we made the choice to go with Newbin over Jean. He wasn't there. He wasn't there. So I do. You know wait. what? That's a very good comment by the Atlantic Circle. Jaheen Bell does remind me. Of I the love that. Ball. He I does. love that. I love that. That's a good call. I love that. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Con considering, considering what was there, considering what was there, I, I think it. we did okay. And and it fits our needs, right? This goes when you do exercises like this. It goes to show that. A lot of times it's not always about need, but it's about the potential money spent on the need. And I think that's more important with teams where for us, we're dealing with a blank, a, a clean slate where we're saying, oh, well, let's just go ahead and add the draft. Right. Add, you know, add the players that we need to the draft. However, if the team philosophy is. Guys, we're spending no more than 12% of our cap on our offensive line. And we've already got 10% of that wrapped up in Trent. You might say to yourself, all right, well, we're kind of putting ourselves in a bottleneck if we draft a guy high in the offensive line. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. all of this stuff is good, but we also don't know, you know, what their philosophy is and what they're willing to put money into and what they're willing to draft high at. You know, every team – just isn't going into the draft saying, well, we're just going to draft the best thing that we think we need right now. You know, money counts, you know, in a certain way. Could you want, all right, this is the perfect example. We've been talking about tight end this whole time, right? But in certain mm -hmm. ways, George in a way probably elevated the tight end room because he became so good being a fifth round pick, but he wasn't like a first round pick or a second round pick where they were actually willing to spend the assets for the position. Right, because when you're willing to spin assets at a certain position, that means ergo you're kind of you already kind of linked in to get that money to put the money there too. So for George, they're probably saying like, man, 
George, we picked up George in the fifth round. He's become more than what we expected him to be. Very good. Damn near one of the best in the league. And now we have to pay him to keep him. Well, shit. What's 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 the caveat to that? What's the compensation? Well, if we got to pay George, a guy that we picked in the fifth round, top position money, top positional money in the league. Well, that means we got to go dumpster diving for all of your backups, dude. There's no way in the world that we could put anybody there that could be close to what you bring because you'll completely tilt and you'll pick you completely tilt and corner our entire offense fiscally. Now over half of our money is in the tight end room. So in certain ways, you can see them kind of drafting for guys, but also saying to ourselves, do we really want to draft a tight end this high? Do we really want to draft um, a tackle this high when we're putting this money in the trend? Right? Do we really want to draft a receiver this high when we're putting all of this money into Jawan, Debo, and uh, potentially B.A.? So just got to see what they'll do. Maybe that's all the reason why they always draft D-line first is because they, they've already prepared to put the money there. Also, I want to say this, too, about the uh, DeGene comment. <clears throat> I get people are projecting him as safety, but he played corner in college. So how do we know that he's just going to be an elite safety? Mm -hmm. I'm just throwing that out there. Newman was an actual safety. And he played nickel. Just saying. Don't sleep on Newman now. Mm -hmm. I'm also just trying to make my pick look good. But I know you are. I know you are. I'm letting you ride. I'm letting you cook. Right but now. how do we, but how do, seriously though, how do we know that he projects? I mean, I get, he projects as a safety, but like, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? God how do we know he can play safety at an elite level? And you know why he projects as a safety? Why? Because white corners don't exist. They're extinct. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, is that? I, I wanted nah, to play. That's corner. a safety. I play, I that's a safety. That's a safety. <laughs> that's a safety. <laughs> we need to start normalizing. We need to start normalizing like racial norms in other areas. I know. He's like <laughs> from far away. That looks like a corner, but then I got closer and said, "You but know he what? Likes that's it. He likes it. That's my cousin. He it's likes safety. it. He ain't white." <laughs> <laughs> Guys, come on. Jeez. <laughs> no. So funny. I mean, look, man, I, I'll uh I'll be excited to see. You know what we could have done? We could have done a draft. <laughs> we could have done a draft. Vanilla speed. <laughs> <laughs> we could have done a draft what? We could have did a draft with what Kyle would do. Oh. You already know, dog. <laughs> Bring on the running backs and kickers. <laughs> Which yeah, we definitely would have taken a running back in round oh, three. Real shit, real shit, real shit. Let's do it really quick. I bet you we could do a, a Kyle draft. You want to do it? You think so? Oh my yeah. gosh. All right. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Let's do a Kyle draft. Let's do a Kyle draft. <laughs> uh, hold on. I saw I saw your material. Huh? I think Sal said I stole his material. Right. A Kyle draft? Yeah, I think he may have said it. Okay. It, we'll, did, we'll, give, we'll give Sal credit. We'll give Sal we'll credit. Give you credit. We'll give you credit, bro. We'll give Sal credit. All right. So you already did the draft. Uh, where's right? the, yeah, where's the best edge at? Give me the best edge. <laughs> give me the best edge. Give me, the <laughs> edge. give me the best edge. What do we got? Oh, he's the, oh, well, let's go. Let's go chop. We're going chop. chop. We're going to take chop. All right. Chop Robinson. Chop Robinson. Okay, I like it. I like it. I like it. It's a good start. It's a really good start. Okay. We got mm. chop. We're going, uh, we're going, definitely going defense. So we need to go interior. Interior uh, D line. Yep. Interior okay. defensive line. Oh, Chris Jenkins. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at Jenkins. Take Chris Jenkins. All right. We're taking Jenkins. You know we're going linebacker next. Mm. No, 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 no. Now we're going running back. Time. No, no. Now would be the time 
for Kyle to get the most mediocre tackle in the draft in the th- with pick oh, 90. like reach for a tackle, yes, reach now for a tackle. So he we're not gonna go with like a, a tackle that's like good, we're gonna reach no, for no, someone. no, no, he's gonna give us some, where's that kid from Houston? No, he was what he's long, well gone, well okay. gone. We're gonna go with a tackle that you just never heard of this dude. Yes, <laughs> from North Dakota State. Take that kid. Hold on, let's maybe if we're a little bit too far down. Actually, is there anybody from? Uh, ooh, I wish we could search by school. What? Who's there what from Stanford? From? Who's there from Stanford? Oh, he loves. We need Stanford. a Stanford guy. Let's see if. Hold on. Yeah. Let's see if anybody from Stanford pops up here anytime soon. He is so into Stanford. It's disgusting. You got to take your Stanford guy somewhere. Oh, there's just Stanford like guy. nobody. There's nobody. Okay, we can't. We can't. All right, let's just take a tackle that neither of us have heard of. This is now, now he would take the tackle. So go ahead and get. Oh, Rosengarten. Okay, perfect. Yep. It's from the Pac 12, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, go get him. Tackle. Mm-hmm. Okay, I like that. We post. definitely are taking a running back. Taking uh, a running back right now. Definitely got to go running back. But it's not like any of the good ones. Like, we got to go right down a little bit. Oh, Cody Schrader is calling my name. I know, Amar. I like Rosengarten. We want to be fair. Okay, so now let's go get let's go get our tight end now. You know that's just when he would get his tight end. Are you sure? I think he would get a running back. I'm just saying. He hasn't drafted a running back. Isaac Garindo. Okay. There we go. He's like, oh, I thought that was a Stanford Cardinal. My bad. <laughs> I know TZ. We tried, TZ. We, this is this is this is somewhat realistic, TZ. All right. Now now we can go Theo Johnson or Jaheim Bell. Well, we're not going. We're Theo doing what Johnson. Kyle would do. Kyle, got, Kyle, his, Kyle do. got his D line. He got his interior defense alignment. He got his edge. He's got his running back. Okay. He's got his tackle. All right. Now these are four picks in. Kyle's not even in the room anymore. Honestly, this is the he's going Dallin Holker. He's going yeah. Dallin Holker because <laughs> we no. like Bell and we like Johnson. He's in like, mm, I don't like those guys. Why would I draft those guys? He went with Cam Latu in round three last year. Cam Latu. I know what we thought was like that. a sixth round guy. I know what you're doing. You're only doing this because of where you went to school. But <laughs> let's go, Theo Johnson. What? Pick him up. All right. All right. What have we not gotten that he needs to get? Cedric Gray, a linebacker. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's you're right. He's definitely going linebacker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is a Kyle draft. Just really itching for a punter or a kicker right now. I'm just throwing that out there. Okay, they're definitely taking a corner. They always take corners late. They always take corners. That's true. Get so let's go look at what we've got at corner. I don't know what's your infatuation with drafting late corners. All the time. Mm-hmm. Is there anybody they, from Stanford? They like getting corners who know how to return, too. Notice all of the, all of the corners are return guys. Yeah, that's true. But I don't know if any of these guys are return guys. Yeah. Hold on. Let's see who's there at safety too. Cause they they'll they'll take a late safety sometimes. They do need a safety. Is Malik Mustafa there? Doubt it. No, 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 no. no. All no. those guys. Oh. He oh, you how bad you gotta be to have your real picture on there? They I was just gonna say. Up. <laughs> I feel like that guy's the guy to take. That's dirt. Yeah, pick my man face. <laughs> <laughs> face. 
face facington <laughs> from <laughs> from face university <laughs> face oh on a face. <laughs> from face state <laughs> let's go devonshire i feel like that's a sounds like something they would do all right we're going with a corner All right, they like to double up. So what what have we taken? We've taken a running back. Would they do a second one? Probably not. They would, they would probably that. actually go like back to back corner. Be like, mm, let's just make sure we got the right one here. We see we need a safety. They do, but also back to back corner. I'm just saying because you got to make sure you hit. Um. <sighs> oh. An Air Force safety sounds right about it. Don't do that. What? <laughs> I'm just saying. I feel like that's the route they would go. Name the last star that played at a service academy. Uh, that's what I'm saying. How long? If it's been a long if time. You're, if, you, if, you're, if, you're, if you're from a service academy. All right, we'll go Omar Brown. We'll go Omar right Brown. Is that unpatriotic? What? It's like. If you're in a service academy, but you're in the draft, aren't you kind of like a, a draft dodger? No. It's like, what no. <laughs> <laughs> draft dodger? <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's, like, what are you doing here? <laughs> stupid. Oh, my gosh. Oh, right you're, look at your guy just staring us right in the face. He's good, man. I like Jalen. Uh, they Ford. definitely need to take a, another interior offensive lineman that's never going to play or might play in six years. Yeah, get him. But he's got to be from an obscure school, like an obscure school. North Carolina State's pretty obscure. <laughs> Air Force Ones. <laughs> <laughs> We're going, Dylan. And I'm, I'm not sure about the corner, so I feel like we need to take another corner just to make sure that we hit. Because I'm not sure on the one that we took. They if might our, actually just go a second safety. Recorded, dude, if our Kyle draft, if our if we get like three to four guys on our Kyle if draft. If our Kyle draft hits. Yeah. Man, how crazy would that be? Up. There we go. Here's our Kyle draft. Edge, D-line. We're going to wait till tackle. Definitely got to get that running back and tight end early. Yeah, I feel like this is it. Took two safeties to make sure we hit on one. I like this. This draft smells the, like X. The the obscure the obscure school offensive lineman. Yeah, I feel like we hit it. This this draft list smells like Red Bull in Copenhagen. <laughs> Red Bull in Copenhagen. Like, this is a good draft. <laughs> Like, no, it's not. Smells like Zen packs. Yeah. Zens. <laughs> Zens and white claws. <laughs> Zens and white claws. Happy dads. <laughs> Kyle's got his happy dads and his Zens. He's got his Taking Zins his and linebackers his and his running backs. He's like, fucking Chris Jenkins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they, these guys are all getting cut within the first two years. I love it. This is a bad draft. <laughs> this draft smells so bad. I don't like this draft. Like, look at, like, this whole draft is in, like, the worst parts of America. Like, Pennsylvania, bitch. Like, this draft. <laughs> Roger Rosengarten, day one, starting tackle. Yo, right, yo, right. Roger Rosengarten is actually a good pick. You know what I'm saying? Yes, this draft smells like true. This is the Kyle draft. This is the Kyle Shanahan draft. This was Kyle our Shanahan we've done draft. two drafts. Listen, we did a dra a real draft where we traded IU, by far the best draft. Then we did no trades, stuck with it. And this is our Kyle Shanahan draft. So yes. there you go. And if our Kyle Shanahan draft hits. We're going to remember that after the actual draft, we're going to go back and see which of our three drafts, how many, if we got any guys right, 
If our Kyle Shanahan draft hits, I'm just saying. I mean, yeah. I can hear <laughs> Rosa Kyle right gives now. away hurries for fun. She's <laughs> like, yeah. So, uh, what? How, how'd you like it? Yo, we got Chop Robinson, Chris Jenkins, Roger Rosengarter. Uh, uh, we uh, <laughs> we got Isaac Garendo. Uh, you know, he's he's a stud. He's a stud. Uh, we got Theo Johnson. Uh, he's a stud. <laughs> Cedric Gray, oh, he's he's tough as shit. We took two Bro. safeties just to make sure we hit. Yeah, and it's like, sir, this is a Wendy's. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's like, oh, I just wanted to talk about my draft. <laughs> I just wanted, I just wanted to talk about the draft. It's like, do you want fries or not, sir? Yeah. Why are you here right now, sir? This is a Wendy's. Nobody cares about these names you're talking about. <laughs> TZ, oh, you're right. You're right. I mean, the top of the draft, you probably wouldn't be that mad in a couple of years when we're just got a dominant edge and, and a good interior defensive lineman. You're, that's, yeah. you're not you're not full of it. Yeah, I mean, th- this is the top, honestly, top six picks, all of these guys can play right away. All of them could play right away. Now, what they're going to actually do with our team, none of these guys are like plus guys. Like Chris Jenkins is probably the most talented guy. Chop Robinson, maybe Cedric Gray. Um, we kind of went FUBAR at the end. But I, as far <laughs> as <laughs> we did, <laughs> just keeping it tall. But, um, you know, I like Cedric Gray. I like Theo Johnson. That's a solid pick. Um, but Dylan McMahon and Josh Proctor, I don't know. I don't know. Isaac Arendo is a Kyle pick for sure, Amar. I think so, too. I think he can't help himself. <laughs> like I said, he saw, a, he saw a Cardinal on there. He's like, that's Stanford, right? No? Yeah. Aww. It's like, it's 230. He's 230. Runs a 4-3. <laughs> Cedric Gray. I mean, we do get good value. You know what I mean? I just don't think they're going to do any of this stuff. You know, Kyle's going to. He's definitely going to get a running back. He's definitely going to get a linebacker, an interior guy, and an edge rusher. We know this. Mel Kuyper picked Rosengard for us at 31. If that happened, I would... Rosengard at 31? If, if that if that, hap- if that happens, I'm going to be live for the draft like always. I'm letting you know right now, I legit might end the stream. If that happened. And why I would know. I not be shocked if they did something like that? I don't know how I respond, bro. That would be a horrible pick. Absolutely shitty to pick. You should be ashamed of yourself. Yes. Unbelievable. All Actually, right. We made it almost two hours. That was impressive. That was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. But it's 11 o'clock at night. I love it. Man. Much love to everybody in the chat. Much love to you, coach. Oh, hold on. Hold on. We do this. Who knows how long ago? This was here an hour and 20. Daz, I'm so sorry. My bad, I was Jazz. on. I I couldn't see. See, where were you at, Coach? I was over here on the mock draft. I couldn't see. I'm, but you know what? Where I'm was your coach. antennas? I'm sorry, <laughs> I didn't Dad, see. It. Daza, I didn't see it either. I've been here for like 20 minutes and still didn't see it. Daza says, seeing as how we seem to do the same things each year in the Kyle Shanahan era with mostly the same issues, do you see us doing anything different in the draft scheme? How players are used? that can get us a ring. No. no I got I something sneaky. I got something sneaky. Not exactly. anything that can get us a ring, but guys, pay attention to how this year's draft goes because this is our first draft without Adam Peters. Oh. So, this is our first draft without Adam Peters, so we're really going to be able to see what these bozos have been doing, like to see what, what other people are in the, um have been doing inside of our building. So it's going to be cool, man. Yeah, it's going to be something to pay attention to. I like it. I like it. All right, y'all. I'll be back tomorrow night with Sunil. Until then, peace. Much love. Stay blessed.